Hey guys, I'm Red. Thanks for checking out my YouTube channel. I get a million questions about this all the time on Instagram, at SteadyRed. And although this video has nothing to do with Tiffin at all, just like all of my videos, today we're going to finally talk about it, the Steadicam Vault. The Steadicam Vault is Tiffin's entrance into the handheld cell phone stabilizer market back in 2017. It was different than other devices on the market because it was more controllable than the competition, especially when it came to quick movements. It takes a bit to set up, but if you have set up a Steadicam, it'll feel very familiar because it uses the same principles as a Steadicam. Because of this, you could also use it as a mini Steadicam when it ran out of batteries. This was obviously the start of the Steadicam vault you were thinking of, and I'm sure they learned a lot creating this that was used to create the upscaled version. Did I buy this just for that joke? Yes, don't buy this. <laughs> don't worry, I can probably still return that. Now this is the industrial version of that. It is the Steadicam Vault, and it is on my M1. And it fits on lots of different rigs, including some pro rigs, a lot of different Tiffin rigs. And if you get the M2, it actually is built into the top stage, which is pretty cool. And it is a horizon stabilizer. And while other horizon stabilizers exist, this one allows you to build your rig normally. It feels like you're just using your rig without a vault, and it doesn't add much weight to the top stage. And I know what you're thinking. Shut up and take my money. Now the Volt is awesome, but it's really expensive, so you don't need to have one. People have been doing awesome shots without one since the 70s. So let's see what it can do. Like I said, it's a horizon stabilizer, so it'll hold horizon for you and counteract the pendulum effect. It's a little hard to see with it being neutral balanced, but when I do knock it out of level, you can see that it returns on the Volt side. Now let's take a look with the two second drop time. The pendulum effect is much more obvious. The bottom heaviness of the rig causes the bottom half to swing out when I make a dead stop. The Volt will also automatically counteract the pendulum in the tilt direction. You can also change the trim at a push of a button, and even change it mid-shot. Tilt the rig to the desired location, press the button, and it'll hold there. and it'll even go back to that location after tilting again. One of my favorite features is the instant dirty low mode. No rebalance needed, just flip the rig, press the button, and it'll hold at this point. But a low mode monitor helps. There's also a mode called sticky mode where it'll stay wherever you tilt it. Now that you understand what it is, let's talk about setting it up and what all the buttons and settings do. First thing you need to do is have the rig set like you normally would, with the camera completely built and everything powered up. Then, plug the power cable to power the control box of the sled. Then, I wrap the slack around the post counterclockwise and plug it into the gimbal. This cable is crazy flexible, so it doesn't have much influence on the gimbal, but you do have to be careful when you're doing things like checking dynamic balance so that it doesn't over tighten. During shots though, it's never an issue because you never spin the rig 360 during a shot. I guess if the shot calls for a selfie from the operator, then maybe that's an issue, but what are the chances they want it four times in the same shot? Now you want to balance like you normally would with your regular drop time so that you can check dynamic balance. Make sure the Volt is turned off, not just paused. I do notice a little bit of resistance from the motors if they do have power in it. Now that it's set the way you would use it before you got the Volt, you need to neutral balance. I start with the drop time and make sure when I put it horizontal, it doesn't move. This involves some super tiny adjustments. I then point the camera away from me, still with the post horizontal, and move it forward and aft until it doesn't rotate. Then I point the lens at the sky and adjust the side to side so it won't rotate in that direction. I then do those two steps one more time.
I test it by putting the rig in lots of orientations and check that it stays where I put it. This takes some time to learn, but if you think logically, you can figure out what knob needs to be changed and to figure out if it's still bottom heavy or top heavy. If you're really having trouble with it, you should go back and check dynamic balance because that's probably the problem. Once I'm happy with it, I line the gimbal handle up with the rear of the camera and power it on from the control box. And I wait for the lights to stop blinking. This is telling the brain where the gimbal is in space. You can also do this when it's docked. I believe if you're a goofy operator, you power it up from the front of the camera. What happens if you power it on when the handle is not to the rear? Well, that puts it into drunken mode. And that's useful for some shot, maybe, probably not. Once it's set correctly, I unpause it and test it quickly, and then pause it to put it back on the dock. Now that it's all done, this is normally the time the audio guy comes over and needs to add a microphone, or the DP wants to change the lens, even though you just asked them. So if any changes are done, you need to reset it to neutral balance. The dynamic balance should be the same, so I skip that, and I do the infinite drop time, the forward aft, and the side to side adjustments. It's important to practice this because it's something that will happen often and people will be waiting on you to complete it. Now that the rig is set up, you don't want to be setting your trim anymore with the forward and aft knobs. You want to use the button on the gimbal for that. It does come up sometimes that when you tilt the rig, it'll pan in one direction. So in that case, you do want to adjust the side to side to keep that from happening. Even though it's no longer perfectly neutral balance, it's calibrated to work with your vault, so it's fine. Every time you press the gimbal button, it sets the new position for the tilt. So even when you tilt past that point, the rig will always want to go back to that position. You can also press and hold the button for two seconds, and when you see the light flash, it is now in sticky mode. In this mode, you can tilt the rig and it'll stay wherever you place it. You can reset it to normal mode by holding the button again for two seconds. This will reset the tilt to the position it was in when you held the button. Now let's take a look at the control box to see what the settings are up there. This first one is the on-off switch, and I mostly just keep that on all day. If the rig loses power or I'm trying to save battery, I will use it, but you need to make sure that the handle is pointed to the rear when you turn it on. I will also hit it occasionally by accident when I'm trying to hit the pause button. This button is used every time you dock or take a rest position with the rig on. It keeps the vault still on and ready to go but won't engage the motors. And then you have the tilt knob, and this controls how fast you want the rig to get to its tilt position. Let's take a look at it, with 10 on the left and 0 on the right. The zero acts as if it's neutral balanced, and the 10 with a faster drop time. I also find you can use this like drag on a tripod. It is a lot easier to tilt like that if you press the gimbal button a few times as you tilt. It's also a good way to hide the stutter that happens when you press the gimbal button, but I believe Tiffin has fixed this in the new update, I'm just too lazy to get it. The motors will also disengage when you get to a crazy tilt angle, like pointed straight down. There it is, you can see the motors kick back in. The roll knob is the same as the tilt knob but in the roll direction. So it's telling the computer how quickly or with how much force you want the motors to find the level position. If you want to go Dutch in the middle of a shot, there's a point at which the computer goes, oh, they're not really that bad at this steady cam thing, they must really want to go Dutch, and it'll disengage the motor in that direction. You can see the motors kick back in, in the video to the left, and now. The dampening knob controls how much artificial pendulum you want the rig to have. With low being that it'll swing back and forth before coming to a stop. And with it maxed out, it comes to a dead stop. Well, close to a dead stop. The trim button is only about selecting the horizon or level. If you were doing a shot with a lot of dutch and wanted it to stay at that angle, you can move it to that position, press and hold the button, and it'll reset with that being the new level. 
I've never used this feature other than to fix minor adjustments in the level, but it's good to have, I guess. You can also reset it by bringing it back to level and pressing and holding it again. Next, I'm gonna put some sort of segue in and we'll talk about the dock. This is the dock that comes with the Volt and it's meant to protect the Volt. Yours most likely won't say steady red, that would be weird. I see other operators using other docks, I don't really know why. If you want to, you can, you just have to be more careful that the Volt doesn't get damaged. One thing I wanted to mention that took me way too long to figure out is that if you take the screw from the bottom here out, you can tilt the dock a bit and I find it very convenient. This is the swinging arm that keeps the rig from being knocked off and you can even lock it closed with this blue switch. Unlike every other dock I know of, it's intended to be docked below the gimbal. Because of this, there is no docking rings on the post anymore, but it also means that there's no way to dock in low mode. I found it's not that big of a deal, it's easy enough to flip around most of the time, but I also picked up this bracket from Jerry Holloway to be able to dock in low mode if I'd like, but you still have to be careful with the Volt. When docking, it's important not to place the rig down at an angle. There's a chance the belt could get caught in the docking bracket and snap it or one of the other components. You want to be placing the rig straight down. This is not a problem for me, but it's something I make sure to tell my grip if they're ever going to dock the rig for me. It is also important to pause the Volt before you dock to keep from looking like a jackass. Now, while practicing with the Volt is important, you should be practicing without the Volt as well, so that when it inevitably breaks on the biggest job of your life, you can still get the job done. So, because the belts actually give you a bit of influence on the rig, I suggest that you take them off for practicing, and I'll show you how to do that. Start by loosening this bolt with a 7 16th Allen key, but don't unscrew it all the way. It just needs to loosen the tension of the belt and give it a little slack. Then I pull the belt over the edge as I rotate the gimbal handle. This takes some practice and hurts my fingers. Then I pull the belt off the gear and over the handle. I then like to retighten the motor so it's not jiggling around. To put the belt back on, make sure that the motor is loose and slide the belt over the gimbal handle and back onto the motor gear. I like to work from the bottom, but you can work from the top also. I get the belt on the gear and I rotate the handle until it pops back on, making sure to guide it with my fingers so it doesn't twist. You then want to tighten the motor back up, but the belt doesn't need to be on very tight. Just tight enough that it'll stay engaged with the gears. The other belt is a lot easier to get off. Start by loosening the screw here to give the belt a bunch of slack, but there's no need to pull it all the way out. Unscrew the weight on the side. Then I pull the belt off the gear as I tilt the gimbal, and it comes right off. I then screw the weight back on, but I forgot to do it in this demo. Putting the belt back on is the exact opposite. Slide the belt back on as you tilt. Then tighten up the tension with the motor. This one also doesn't need to be very tight. Then screw back on the weight. So taking on and off these belts seems really scary. They always feel like they're gonna break. They tell you that they're Kevlar reinforced, that they're super strong. I have no idea what that means, but I've always been curious like how much force it takes to break it. So let's break one.
I've kind of run out of sandbags. So I am actually shocked that that worked. I had no idea it was gonna work. I had done zero research on it, but I was sure I was gonna break it with those first two sandbags. And I am shocked that it held my body weight. The problem is that I was gonna end the video by saying that the vault is broken now and that I can't show you anything else. So it, it's not broken. It's the belt's fine. You can't even tell it was used at all. I tested it, it works fine. So thanks for watching. Check out my Instagram, Matt Steady Red, and check out some of these other videos. If you're interested, you probably like them. Thanks so much for watching. I also want to show some of the clothes I bought for work. Why, you ask? Well, since I talked about them in a video, I can write them off on my taxes. <laughs>